you may never have heard of spinal muscular atrophy before. However, it's important to realize that SMA is the number one genetic killer of children under the age of two. What is SMA, spinal muscular atrophy? SMA is a disease of the motor neuron, cells which are located in our spinal cord, the deep structures of our brain called the brain stem, and these cells send out processes in the peripheral nerve to eventually make contact with our muscles in our arms, our legs, our chest, our breathing muscles. If there is something wrong, if the anterior horn cells, the motor neurons become sick or die, then the nerve no longer carries the trophic message, the life-giving message to the muscles, and the muscle cells atrophy and die, thereby the term spinal muscular atrophy. SMA is a genetic disease, and like many genetic diseases, it has a tremendous spectrum of involvement. There are almost infinite different variations in the severity, the age of onset, and the ultimate prognosis of SMA children and young adults. But for the sake of convenience, we think in terms of a categorization of type 1, type 2, type 3, and type 4 SMA. In type 1 SMA, the most severe form of the disease, symptoms are present before the age of six months. And these children never acquire the power, the strength, and the endurance to sit independently, to crawl, or walk. The greatest threat to their life and limb are respiratory complications, which we'll discuss in just a bit. The typical presentation is the classic type 1 baby, the babies that were described over 100 years ago by doctors Wardnick and Hoffman. These children may appear quite normal at birth, but before the age of six months, it becomes apparent that there are problems with their motor control. Oftentimes, head control is poor, their difficulties with feedings, their problems with breathing with a very unusual breathing pattern with the stomach pumping up and down with each breath, so-called paradoxic respiration. And this is due to weakness of the chest wall. Chest wall muscle weakness and difficulties with breathing, difficulties with clearing secretions, constitute the greatest threat to the survival of these youngsters. And the threat is compounded by the fact that there's oftentimes bulbar weakness, weakness of the muscles of the lips, the tongue, and the pharynx, which makes it very difficult for these children to handle secretions such as saliva, oftentimes makes them vulnerable to breathing food, formula, breast milk. Instead of going into the food pipe, the esophagus, there may be aspiration into the windpipe, the trachea, and chemical pneumonias may then result. And these can prove extremely serious. They may prove lethal to these youngsters. The care, the support of a child with SMA type 1 is a heroic effort. And we appreciate that this oftentimes dominates the lives of parents and caregivers. What do we need to do? How can we prepare a parent, a caregiver, for the Herculean task of caring for a child with SMA? Well, firstly, you are not alone. There is a network of services available. There are other parents, caregivers, who have faced the same obstacles and same challenge that you're facing right now. It becomes critical to find a healthcare resource which includes a multidisciplinary team of clinicians and therapists. A child with SMA1 needs the whole team, the whole village, to care adequately for his or her needs. The typical captain of that team is either a neurologist or a physical medicine and rehabilitation specialist. And it's important that you yourself choose a team captain with whom you can establish an easy, ongoing, and respectful relationship. It takes a team, usually captained by the family, and implemented in a neuromuscular center 
to meet the needs to provide for the optimum health care support for a type 1 infant. The team will typically consist of a neurologist or a physical medicine and rehabilitation specialist, a pulmonary medicine specialist, and a respiratory therapist, a gastroenterologist or nutrition specialist, physical and occupational therapist, a genetic counselor, and very importantly, a caseworker or a social worker who can help parents navigate the almost interminable and complex uh, rules and regulations of healthcare insurance to make sure that their child is provided with the very best care, therapy, orthotic devices, durable medical equipment. The constant and ever looming threat to children with SMA type 1 are breathing problems, respiratory insufficiency, the inability to take a deep enough breath, the difficulty with clearing secretions because of weakness of the chest wall making it very difficult for a child to cough up saliva, mucus during the course of a otherwise quote unquote benign respiratory infection, making these children set ups for more serious episodes of pneumonia and lung collapse and it's respiratory issues which take the lives of these children most often. It's very important for parents and health caregivers to establish a relationship with the neuromuscular team so that they will have the optimal information needed to care for that child within the dictates of the conscience of the parents and family. It takes a village, and it takes a village of mutual respect such that a game plan can be put in place for the routine care of this youngster. In the event of a quote-unquote sick day, an acute intercurrent illness, what will the plan be? Will there be the continuation of basic health care support? Will there be the introduction of non-invasive ventilation, a mask placed over the child's nose and mouth, or nasal prongs put into the nostrils attached to a non-invasive breathing machine. In the event that a child not only has lung weakness, but weakness of the lips and tongue, the only way to support the breathing pattern in that child may prove to be invasive ventilation. The performance of a tracheotomy with a, a hole in the windpipe, and then ongoing, oftentimes 24-7 mechanical ventilation these are incredibly difficult decisions to make and must be made in the context of an informed family and a family that in their heart of hearts knows what's best for their child. I don't pretend to have all the answers. When I discuss this issue with family members, parents, grandparents of SMA type 1 children, I learn as much as I can impart as far as scientific and clinical knowledge. It becomes imperative that family members have as much information at their disposal to make the best possible decisions for their child. There are tremendous advances which have been made in our basic understanding of spinal muscular atrophy, its cause, and potential therapies. There are meetings which go on throughout the year including a very important meeting sponsored by Fight SMA held every April in Washington, D.C. There are resources available through this webpage to help you understand the basic science, the hope through research, and the opportunity to post questions to ask of other families, healthcare experts, to make your decisions the decisions which are right for you and your child. I hope that you'll take the time to visit other areas within this webpage. I thank you very much for your attention. I know that you're in for a difficult fight, but it's one that we'd like to help you along with as best as we can.